Hello and welcome to the Theory of Thing Investment Podcast. I am James Wheeler, Managing Director of Barclay Pierce Capital's Asset Wealth Management Team. I'm going to get that right one day. Fantastic. I'm joined by Heath Ledgerwood Moss. Ledgerwood. Where did that come H, from? Of HLM Investments. <laughs> it's, I think it gives you quite a distinguished, a distinguished oh, Heath, Heath Ledgerwood Moss. The second. I, I, I am half British, so... <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, anyway. yeah, I'm 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 very well, mate. Very well. The spring is truly here in Adelaide. It's sensational weather. It's oh. been fantastic this week. Um, but uh, yeah, it's it's great. Uh, it's been a lighter week for me this week uh, versus last week in terms of client work, SOAs, and that. Not have, having to worry as much about that. The kids yeah. are on school holidays, so I'm enjoying spending some time with them. Um, yeah, it's good. What about you? Mate, um, just just getting through, been limping limping my way around the three day long the three day weekend was good. I I nominated myself to be in charge of orders because the market was still open, but obviously you you know it's three day you you got to let people yep. sort of be off and yep. and just if any if there is any emergency then 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 I I was one who handled it. So wasn't too taxing, but managed to get out to the beach. Got out to Clonta, uh, not Clonta, who were I? Collaroy. Got out to oh, Collaroy. Right. Um, mm-hmm. the cracking beach is all good, and we saw whales. We swam oh, with the fantastic. whales. I mean, they're, they're a couple of kilometers away, but whatever it's there. So, um, and that was amazing. I have been, I have been limping in. First one turning on the lights every morning this week as well. Last one to go. Um, absolutely, just slamming through a whole bunch of whole bunch of stuff that is involved in the, the running of a wealth management company. That you know, you don't need to know laws, sausages, corporate deals. Running a stockbroker is, uh, is that um, Robbie Farah. On the you know well and truly in the in 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 the culture ingrained in it now and 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 meetings that we're having with him and the externals all positive you know he's he's, he's he's smart I, it it annoys me it annoys me that it surprises not to talk you know I, I, I never talk derogatorily derogatorily about anyone it annoys me that people are just like oh he he's really it's just like what do you expect like he's he's got an economics degree he's been in this industry he's been in and around this industry for that long. He gets what you get. He he knows like what were you what do you think you were going to have? You got a smart guy. He's a smart footballer and he's a smart yep. human being. Um, yep. And I, I just love I just love having him around the place too. So it's great. If you want to if you want to invest in the fund or the wealth management thing, you have a meeting with Robbie. Send me a note. Um, speaking of uh, speaking of wakey wakey, on three or after three. <laughs> You're cool, mate. On three. There we go. One, two, three. There you go. All right, I'm Beautiful. on the I'm on the I'm on the wakey wakey, just the normal one. That's 100 milligrams of caffeine and guarana. Yep. Boost the energy berry. levels. Uh, you're on the berries, are you? Yeah. Yep. It's got yep. vitamins the B1, B2, less than 10 calories. Mate, there's been some goings on, have there not? Uh, first off, you know, we'll get to the footy at the end. But uh, look, I, I I did get some feedback from certain people that we do have too much of a too much of a chit chat and too much of a yarn. Uh, to which I responded, I don't know, go. Go do your own podcast then, man. I don't know. I'm I'm just flying the drone here. What do you want from me? It's anyway. <laughs> we talk markets though, and we do talk markets, and that's what we do. Live from Raider Nation here. It is, I haven't even given the date. It's the eleventh of October. Oh my goodness. Oh. It's the last quarter of the year on the calendar, second quarter of the financial calendar, depending on where you are. The first quarter of the Japanese calendar. What do they do? They do like a September yeah, they're, sort of they're weird. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Weird in the calendar, not as a cultural yeah, people. Cal- I don't, please don't write <laughs> yeah. me. For, uh, we love Heath, our Japanese that's, listeners. <laughs> that's Heath Ledgerwood Moss, care of HLM Investments, uh, <laughs> South Australia Road, South Australia. Um, you only know, just have one road that just goes straight through that yeah, just connects yeah, exactly. to Sydney. Yeah, yep, okay. everyone just lives on that one road. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Number twenty-eight, Heath Ledgerwood Moss. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Mate, you got some. Get, let's get straight into the market data just to just to shut the shut the haters up. What do you say? Okay, no worries, mate. I'll I'll, I'll share my screen. We'll, Where we'll are do we? Do some yarns. You do some yarns at the end. Okay. Yep. There we go. There we go. Yeah. As always, as always, we're starting with the uh, S and P five hundred, which uh, you know uh, gets thrown around uh, as it did with September. That October it, during an election year is the worst uh, performing month of the year, mm. and mm-hmm. uh, the market is just again totally dismissing that at this point. Um, we are we're slightly up. I think uh, the uh, if we zoom in there, uh, we made a new record not last night, the night before, uh, which is slightly above the old record. Not much, so we're up, you know, one tenth, two or two tenths of a percent for the the month. 
But uh, things are going along nicely. Uh, earnings season starts tonight. Uh, they've got the banks. Um, I think, it was, uh, was it JP Morgan? JP Morgan uh, always, always leads off the yeah, 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 well, is it Wells Fargo also tonight? We had Pepsi the other night, which came out, which, you know, was a bit meh. Um, they, they beat on revenue, missed on earnings, sort of seeing some of that organic growth struggle now. Um, mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. maybe we're mm -hmm. going to start to see that sort of uh, price wars between Coke and Pepsi start kicking off again. Because that's sort of oh, been dismissed God. over the yep. last... And we were talking about in our group how expensive um, certain things have become since COVID that haven't dropped. And I think soft drink was discussed as, as one of them. And I remember back in the day, you used to be able to get, you know, on special pack of can of Cokes and you get them for about 50 cents a can. Now you're paying around eighty cents a can, even on special. So that's a um, lot. Yeah, it is. It is, and I think you're going to start to see the price wars come in for a lot of these food guys again as they try and gain market share off each other, etc. And some normality kicks back in into the markets um, because inflation is coming down, uh, def de disinflationary and deflationary, especially in food. So um, there's disinflation yeah. and then there's deflation. Deflation, two completely well. separate things. They are, well, I could yeah. put it separate, but whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, I think Mate, I'm, uh, I'm looking, I'm looking for a chart. I'm looking for a world changing chart that's going to tell you what, what, uh, some stuff that's going on. I can't believe okay. I didn't hit the like button on it. That's crazy. Oh, I know. Um, I do that sometimes, oh, and it, it really annoys me. But I'll keep going until you you find you that. Keep going. So, you keep going. I'll keep searching. So we haven't had much in terms of macro data in the US this week. We um we had uh, CPI out last night, which is slightly hotter than expected, two point four on the headline versus two point three expected but down from the 2.5 last month. Four was 3.3 versus the 3.2 expected and uh, 3.2 last month. So slightly hotter. Market really didn't care. We were down a bit and then rallied towards the the close, which was um, uh, important. I think shelter and food made up something like 75% of the gains um, on, uh, on the CPI. So those two areas, I mean, shelter's been uh, inflationary, highly inflationary for a while. And we all know why shortage of houses and, and rents are going up sky high in the U S very similar here to in Australia. Um, but food, uh, but food's very volatile that can move up and down depending on weather, et cetera, as well. So, um, nothing really to see there. We saw initial and continuous jobs claims come in much higher than expected. Again, that's probably hurricane more hurricane impacted. We've had back to back bad hurricanes. We saw Milton make landfall yesterday. It wasn't as bad as expected, which is good, but still nonetheless, you, people any yeah. guy, any guy out there who's always struggled on the dating scene whose name is Milton. If you're oh. struggling this week, then you've got no game, man. Because this is your chance. This is your chance for that intro. <laughs> hurricane <I'm a> Hurricane <laughs> Milton, ladies. I'll buy you I'll buy you a beverage. <laughs> old, Milton, old, Milton's, are you, old Milton's found his old Milton's in his fuck in his sweet spot. <laughs> Element, right? He's right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, so we, we saw that, um, and that's basically it for the US. I mean, until earnings kick off tonight, and and in more earnings, we we'll get the um tech guys in two weeks. I think that's the big week, two weeks, and everyone will that's be all watching the fun. them. Yeah, that's the, that's fun, the fun stuff. Part. The, fun part, because... the fun part is going to be watching four different Googles all report after the European Union breaks them apart. That's going to be that's going to be the fun part. Oh, mate, they're not going to be able to do that. They're, they're too big now. They, they're too vertically integrated. You can't break them apart. It's The time for that was five, six years ago mate, um, Europe's, before they got Europe's, this big. Europe's capability of doing the most insane thing through for, for regulatory purposes is not. However, however, as a friend of mine, as a friend of mine did say, uh no, I'm definitely not going to name who that person is. It was it, just just that the reason why it was Milton. This is, it was it was Milton. <laughs> Hurricane Milton. Hurricane Milton. <laughs> Ladies love him. Uh, it was he was talking about uh, Google with the U.S. lawmakers. He's just like you know you know yep. why the U.S. lawmakers won't try and take us down. It, he he sort of he sort of said it with a glint in his eyes. Just like every time a U.S. you know someone from someone from Congress starts to arc up about it, someone from google goes and pays a visit and you know they're the worst people in the world lobbyists u.s washington lobbyist and they just sort of slide a piece of paper across the desk that would have their search history or their wife's search history or their because incognito yeah. incognito <laughs> is not incognito to google it's just uh, we have we have your ip <laughs> okay okay here's your search history are you sure you want to go down this route? And it, it's it's um yeah that's why it's never that's why it's never taken. It's like okay okay I like that I like that that's a good exactly. that's a good little thesis. Yeah, exactly. I, I'm going to share something up here as well because we've got to keep it mixing up. 
All right, um, I'll stop sharing and you you take over the screen. Okay, this is. I got to make sure that I'm putting, not putting any confidential information up there, and I'm not. No, is that good? That looks all right. Yep, there we go. That is that is TSA travel data, early mm -hmm. signs of air travel slowdown. That is a year on year change as a percentage on numbers numbers going through the TSA, numbers searched by the TSA. You know, there's yep. bits of raw data that's actually like, you know, like like uh, when they have buildings, uh, office buildings, the people yep. who do the keys, that the electronic keys, that's how you know yep. <laughs> if it's taking up or going down, if there's a, if there's a rise in the electronic key. Um, usage from that company. How, how much so is the result of the uh, hurricane? So, because uh, that is that, that, is, a, have... that is a trending that is trending down, my friend. That's not a yeah. that's not a sharp. Oh, this week, Milton Milton's in town, ladies. Yeah, but um, I mean, you look there, you can see it, it. It sharply turns down in in September when the hurricane season starts, and we had a few. Well, it's also small some, ones. Summer's, yeah. summer's 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 over, right? It is a yeah. year on year change. Anyway, look, it's yep. whatever it is. No, I, fair I, enough. I and obviously I've I'm just like we have not seen the bottom in Vegas ticket costs is my uh, is my take on that. I'm yep. I'm waiting. I'm writing it out. I'm trading. I'm trying to trade trade the range on the uh, on on Las Vegas tickets this year. I, I, I reckon want... uh, we see that kick back up again in um uh, in over the winter periods because I reckon the US are in for a pretty bad winter this this year. Um, yeah. and the, the, they, uh, they take advantage of still a fairly strong U S dollar and get over to Europe. Um, we start yeah. to see, uh, yeah, more, more flying over there, but yeah, it, the consumer consumer, um, whilst, uh, the environment is improving there, there's still tight, especially in lower income and lower middle income, um, areas, the, the upper incomes mm. are doing fantastic, but mm. they are, and it, it's a volume based thing. So yeah, I can see how that would, uh, uh, would uh, think, and I suppose with uh, you know, sort of coincides with Pepsi's results and seeing organic growth um, slow down. Um, there is there is signs that the U.S. consumer uh, has stopped spending a little bit, but we yeah. all know well, my as, thoughts on that. So as, we all know. I mean, I it's well, keep keep in mind, keep in mind. So someone asked me, someone someone on my team asked me this, said, "Oh, what do you think that could be?" I said, "You know, just with regards to that, and also some other things that you're talking about. So with regards to air air travel sort of slowing down." And it was, I was just like, hey, it's eventually we are all going to see whatever the Fed saw to make them do a fifty point cut last month. Yeah, exactly. That's yeah. that's that's the thing. We know that that was there was something that was there that they knew that they had to do. That was that was a was there only one. I, I, it still blows me away that there was only one. What do you, what do you call it when you're against the thing? Abstainer, not abstainer. One, yeah. one person that was against the cut. Uh, again, oh, yeah. a fifty point cut. Yeah. Right? So they all saw it. It wasn't a debate that happened. It was just one guy or whoever. Anyway, yeah. you're going to see what they saw over the coming months. So that's it. Yep. And then the cut yep. the cut isn't really going to take effect until like midway through next year. Exactly. And they take a while. They take about six months, at least six months to filter through. Um, right. Maybe more in the US because it's not as direct. Here in Australia, we, we have a, a rate rise or a rate cut. It, six weeks later, it's immediate, immediately felt on your mortgage um, mm. for most people. And then that impacts you, obviously your discretionary spending. Where in the US, you know, most eighty percent of mortgages are fixed into five uh, percent or below. So, you know, a rate rate rise or a rate cut really doesn't impact them at that level uh, until a much longer later when it affects corporate um, uh, corporate earnings and jobs and stuff like that. So, hmm. um, <laughs> yeah. But uh, so getting back to the US, we'll go since we're talking rates and cuts, etc. We see the uh, ten-year yield here up on the screen. It's it's spiked higher. We're up about uh, I think days, ten basis points on the week, and that's again the market's pricing out rate cuts uh, on the back of a stronger U.S. economy, which is fair enough and actually is very positive news. Um, a lot of those bears out there, infl inflationary bears, are saying that inflation is going to, you know, take over again. But I'm just not seeing it globally. We're in this de de uh, disinflationary and deflationary period. You know, and the US is not, uh, you know, um, not going to miss that. I mean, especially with energy. I mean, you look at energy. Uh, we've had Let's two hurricanes, two, two hurricanes, and a, a conflict, a major conflict in the US and in the Middle East, and it's up ten percent. I mean, um, and uh, I think it's going to go lower. We've got the problem. Um, my thoughts with oil are obviously these uh, short-term things like hurricanes and conflicts in the Middle East cause these short-term spikes. But mm. eventually, it all comes down to the this demand and supply dynamics. And at the moment, there's still too much supply and not, not enough demand out there. 
Um, and we have this thing hanging over our head now with Saudi Arabia with 2.5 to 3 million barrels of extra capacity a day that they can flick on uh, whenever they want. They've, they've said yep. that they've, they've stopped focusing on $100 barrel oil, are more focused on their market share. Last time they did that in 2014, they they, they turn the, the uh, coffers on, they turn the pumps on full blast and crush the price back down to about 30 bucks. Now, I don't think it goes back down there again because, you know, the cost of getting it out of the ground is much, much, much higher than it was back in 2014. So $50 a barrel is not out of the, mm. the question, which is another, you know, 30 uh, to, to 40% lower than where we are now. So I'm very cautious short-term on energy. Um, it's great for the consumer if we, we do get down there. Obviously, it helps everyone at the petrol uh, petrol pumps um, and everything flows, you know, oil is involved in all supply chains. Um, so it helps there, but, uh, in terms of your energy stocks, um, they, they'll, they'll suffer for a little bit. Um, but longer term, my longer term thesis is still when China and the U S and all that are all pumping again and doing really well, we do not have the capacity to meet the demand when it's back at full bore. So, um, I am still on the long term uh, energy, uh, train. So, but, uh, yeah, so, um, that's, that's oil. I mean, it's up, I think 3% for the week. It was up about 7% last week. Um, Really, it's it's moving on these hurricanes and and what's happening in the Middle East. Nothing yep. else. We saw a big well, inventory uh, I, bill. I heard a stack. I heard a yeah. There was it was a, a monumental inventory bill. So yeah. much higher than expected. There was a stat that I heard and I can't remember it. I hate it when that happens. This morning it was either twenty five or fifty percent of the world's oil goes through the Straits of Hormuz. Yep. Yep. Something that like is, that. Either, either one of those numbers is big enough where that's a thing, right? Yeah. Um, and I do remember from years ago reading the Gartman letter. Oh, well, back when back when I used to read the Gartman letter, that guy. Um, <laughs> it was uh, th- it talk, talking about the estimated amount of time that it would take. Remember, Iran was blockaded; they were going to blockade the, the, yep. the straits. Yep, yep. And yep. it was. I think. I think that the estimations, like general g- general estimations, would take about an hour and fifteen for that to be completely eradicated by the U.S. Navy. Um, yeah. Anyway, it's it's. Oil shocks, oil shocks on geopolitical tensions are almost always overblown. Yes, yeah, they, they are. are they are real, but they are almost always. Oh my God, look at it! You know why? Because Bloomberg loves putting a thing about it. Um, CNBC loves doing a thing about it. It's look at this oil shock straight to Formuz. Mm. Here's a photo of a, a, you know, an Iranian aircraft carrier. Mm. Mm. Whatever. I don't it, know. It it's, gets it's, the clicks. It's, yeah. It, it, it gets it, the clicks. It gets the headlines. It, and people get on the phones and they decide, oh, we've got to get out of our oil. We're going to, and that's retail just shifting it and it's just a piece of cake. Um, yeah. Scoop it yeah. up. Go nuts. Uh, okay. What, um, let's, let's round it. Move on. Yeah. Move, move it on. Uh, copper. Iron ore. Off. Iron, you've got to show me iron ore. Show me iron ore. Give me two secs. Uh, where Chinese, are we? There we go. Chinese, stim, Chinese stimulatus has there been sort of. It's it's more of a sort of sell, maybe not a sell the fact, but it's more of a everyone's saying, oh, there needs to be more, needs to be more. It's 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 you got to really juice the whole thing. And it's like, what is it? Rebar rebar inventory is down. Um, I was just going through our morning report with with our Insta guy Andrew Murphy. Uh, yep. What is it? Rebar rebar inventory is down. Um, we're seeing the production is starting to ramp up as well. Yep. I I I'm I'm still bullish on iron ore. I'm still bullish on iron ore. I think that China is not completely cactus. I think that we're I think that we're in the right sphere. Um, yeah, that's just and, me though. And like we said, uh, I think last week and with uh, Scuddy when he, he was on, uh, was uh, that wasn't last week? It was the week before or something? A couple of weeks ago. Um, yeah, feels like yeah, yesterday. Um, yeah, I, I think this is this is the, this is not the solution, but it's the start of fixing their problems and stops the rot. Uh, we've started to see steel prices in in China improve. Like you said, inventories for iron ore have come off. Um, we, we were past the, re- the new rebar standards uh, date, so the dumping of old stock will, will stop. Um, so th- sort of the environment's become better. It's still, in my opinion, not really heaps bullish. We're going to have to wait to see how this property market responds to some of this stimulus um, and if we do get construction moving again. Um, but there will... That's off the got, races. Yeah, we've got, we've got, we've got to China, uh, the finance minister speaking on Saturday, about their fiscal stimulus. I don't think anything new is going to come out of that. I think it's more an explanation of this is what we've said, this is where it's going, yeah. this is how we're spending it, et cetera, which should instill more confidence because a lot of people are saying, you know, we've seen this before in the last 12 months and they haven't had full take-up from, you know, their provinces and st- local governments, et cetera. 
I think this time is different around the way the language they use. This is and, coming from the top. This is going yeah. for the top. This is. This and is they're going to say, is, "You do what we need to do." You, yeah. you find you find a way to spend these special issuance bonds and and get this stimulus out there and get the economy going again because uh, the the uh, the opposite the, the the other side of things uh, is just too far too you know worse. You don't want to con- contemplate what could happen. If we can't mm. get this beast going again. So um, mm. and I think uh, they'll get we'll get more stimulus either was the end of this year or the start of Q1 after they've analyzed the data. But the, the golden week, um, in terms of consumer consumption, the golden week stats were really promising. We saw, uh, saw WeChat and uh, Alipay transactions up substantially. I think WeChat was up 20% on year and Alipay was up 120% on year. Really? Um, cool. Yeah, yeah, For during the golden week for the consumers. So the consumer is spending. Okay. Travel figures in China are still really, really high and breaking records. Uh, they were, They broke records again in golden week. So the consumer is mm-hmm. still doing okay. It's just um, so that property side of things, and then getting the consumer really spending again, is um, is is the key here. So um, yeah, we'll get more, we'll get more stimulus, um, and hopefully, yeah, things are all good in China. I'm bullish, like longer term, I'm bullish on all with you and and China, and I think this is the start of the turnaround of for China and resources, um, and not to mention you heard it here first, folks. Not to mention we still got the this. Um, decarbonization electrification that the whole globe is going on so even if china are not using as much steel as they were in previous years a is less than 20 percent of this of their steel use now is used in construction that was over 30 percent 10 years ago and b the rest of the world is going to start consuming more steel and using more steel because they have to upgrade their power networks and do everything to get this decarbonization and meet their targets so um, there's a lot to play out there, I think, in the rest of the world too. A lot, of, the rest of the world's going to do a lot more heavy lifting um, moving forward as well. I think so. Yeah, that's that's uh, iron ore and steel. I think uh, wrapped up there. Copper um, coming off a little bit, as were all the metals this week, basically on the back of um, uh, you know that hype from China. Sort of, um, it was at boiling point. Now it's simmering, and will continue to simmer in the background. We've seen all the resources stocks like BHP, Fortescue, Rio, all come off. Um, and I think that's about, yeah, I think that's the most we want to talk about. Maybe I'll oh, we'll talk about, um, uh, let's talk about, uh, what are we, LTM just quickly. That's not a, that's not that. That's, uh, I want a stock where it is. There we What's go. LTM. LTM. So we zoom out. That that's where we are now. Yeah. That's the one Rio's made a bid for. Is yeah. this the bottom for lithium? Um, Rio, and we know Pilbara came in, um, a few months ago, made a 400 million bid for Latin resources, which is obviously is small, be, is small be, fry. It's going to be a big time from Heath. This Heath Ledgerwood Moss is about to call the bottom <laughs> in, heat, in lithium, ladies and gentlemen. Stand back. I actually called the bottom in lithium about a month ago. You but, did, um, yeah. You're calling it again. <laughs> yeah, I'm, call, I'm calling it again. I think I'll the call bottom, it until it's bottom, done. <laughs> the bottom for equities is, is in. Start accumulating now. I think prices could still swing around a little bit because China... Yeah. Uh, is still trying to flood the market with uh, with lithium from their their uh, brines, which are high cost, high, imp- high impurities, and Africa as well, which again, mm. high cost, high impurities. But eventually that will stop. We saw cattle um, uh, and BYD cut lithium production, et cetera, in their mines. So I think this is the start. Rio has signaled we think this is the bottom because remember a couple of years ago, Rio came out and actively said we will look to buy lithium when the prices are right and we think uh, you know we're close to a bottom. Well, this they this do, is they, them declaring it. Yep. And I remember um, fire, tra- fire trail went through and just where there's a really easy metric which when spodumene levels are at whatever. There's this point that's exactly there. That's when you buy. That's where you sell. It's it just doesn't get any simpler than that. Yep. Now if we were talking a little while ago about about what the Fed saw that nobody else could see theoretically. Mm-hmm. So what, what is it? What is it about this that that Rio thought it's ninety percent higher than where it is, is where it should be? Is the value yep. of this company? As we know, the, the the value of something is only what the last person paid for it. Yep. That is that is where Rio puts the value of this company at. Yep. I, I think that you've got to ask the question about a lot of other stocks. So yep. I'm with you on this one. I'm just going. They are undervalued. No, I mean, well, look, hey, you can see it here. Nuts. Yeah. Mm. You see, so Arcadium Lithium is the old Oracobra. Uh, before they merged with, um, uh, there was a small company they merged with here, and then they oh merged with Liv- Livent in, um, in oh, the US. I just realized that. Yes, 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 yes. I have, yes. I have a client. I have an old client yeah. from my old shop who is a long, long holder of this thing. Yep. Yep. Oh. So they they merged with Livent in the US. <laughs> 
Yeah. And so I think now Australia, I don't think Australia is the domicile for these guys anymore, but um, uh, they have th- their main pr- assets are brine, a brine lithium, and they're very high quality, low cost assets. These things, oh, they're, they're producing at around 4,000 bucks a ton carbonate, and they're selling it for, you know, at the moment it's eight, nine thousand dollars a ton, I think carbonate, you know, Ugh. possibly going higher to 13,000. So their, their margins are still quite large. Their assets, they've got great assets to bring online from Livent. Uh, Livent um, in the US um, had great assets, but they weren't producing. So they mm. merged because uh, uh, Oracobra could, um, uh, had the capital and the know how to do it. But Rio, I mean, to me, Rio getting a fantastic assets and not to mention technical knowledge. The technical knowledge to convert your substance, your, uh, your brine or your, your hard rock into actual carbonate is almost as important as the resources themselves because it's a tricky thing to do and there's not many people out there that can do it. These guys are one of the best in the world. Um, so I think Good. Rio getting a, a bargain intel. here um, and okay. I think I think the, the uh, Arcadian board should be ashamed and, and should not be being accepting this price. They, sh- they should be waiting and, and holding out until prices of lithium are much higher because I think there's another 50 to 100% on top of what they could have got here. Um, All righty. So I, Alrighty. But Rio, Rio Heath, getting a great, great asset. Rio getting Heath, great asset. Ledgerwood Moss. Is it, so I, I, I've, this is one of those things of having your head buried into, into a spreadsheet for the last mm-hmm. couple of days. What is it done? Oh, well, no, it's not no, done it's, by it's, any it's means. A it's, a, it's a, okay. Okay. It's but, just, a, but it's a, the it's, okay. Acadian board have backed it. And generally when you see the board at back it, it goes through unless there's a large blocking stake and there are no large blocking stakes in Arcadian. So, okay. um, I I think it goes through. So, but I like I said, I think signals were in this bottom of the um uh, cycle. If, if Rio are willing to pay a ninety percent premium to what the last traded price was, then I yeah. think yeah. So keep an eye on something like I'm going to give you a little tip here because we had a complaint that we we wanted more more tips and more market talk. I'm going to give you a little tip here. My yeah. favorite lithium stock at the moment, and of course this is general advice only. Um, uh, you know, seek seek uh, the advice from your financial planner before you Hurry do up. anything. <laughs> is 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 Wildcat Resources WC eight? Now All they right. don't have the best asset. They've got a great asset, but not the best asset. But what they yeah. do have is a lot of cash. They're sitting on seventy five million dollars of cash. And what you're going to find is if we do get an uptick in lithium, a lot of companies will their share prices will rise. They'll raise cash because they're all they're all struggling for cash. These guys won't have to worry about it. And they'll bring out their maiden jork resource either the end of this year or the start of next year. And they, uh, Chris Ellison and Rin Resources own 20% of them. So I think okay. eventually they come Mate, in I've and got say, visitors. Hey. I, got, I, got, I got visitors here. <laughs> WC8, get onto it right now. WC8, okay. Wildcat yes, Resources. Yes, it is. Wildcat Resources. I'm going to be buying some this afternoon. So that'll be uh, by the time you hear this podcast. Well, front run, front run, Heath Ledgerwood Moss's own uh, general advice in nature, whatever. Uh, this week, I'm I'm taking the Saints with three and a half against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Oh yeah, um, yep, yeah. So I mean, three and a half is pretty good for the Saints. I thought they played they played quite well last week. Um, unlucky against the Cowboys. I couldn't believe that. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. that that game was that game was monumental. It went overnight. It was Dak Dak Prescott? Here's the record for you. Dak Prescott, the first player in history to throw an intercept in the same game over two different days. He threw one. Oh, because it was in London, wasn't it? The game before, was in no, London. No, 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 yeah. no, 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 no. They delayed the game. This is the Monday night game. Oh, okay? yeah. yeah, the storms. No, the sun, it was the Sunday night game. So the storms yep. delayed it, which meant that it didn't yep. finish until about one o'clock. Yep. So technically, yep. he threw one before twelve. He threw an intercept before twelve. <laughs> he threw an intercept after twelve. Two different days, same game. Only Dak Prescott could pull off such a monumental achievement. A man was... so extraordinary. He's throwing intercepts left, right, and said he's throwing. He's throwing. He's crossing the calendar spread of yep. incompetence. Okay. Calendar anyway, spread. what have you got this week? Um, I've got uh, this week. I got my Bills one wrong from last week. This week, I have the Bears, Chicago Bears, to cover the spread at home to the oh, Jags. Bears. Uh, I think the spread's only one and a half pound, a dollar ninety. Bears are looking good. I think the Bears make the playoffs this year. So, um, uh, yeah, they'll cover the spread at one and a half uh, versus Jags at home, paying a dollar ninety. Yep. So that's my bet for the week. Mate, good work. Uh, I've. It, it turns out that that old client of mine actually was was quite aware of the news, uh, which is good. When fantastic, when have that. 
this is this is why I'm not frontline advising anymore, man. I've got to run running a business and doing sort of more of a general sort of thing. That's how that's how it goes. Um, hey, thanks very much for joining us today on the Theory of Thing Investment Podcast. You have been listening to Jumpin' Jim Whelan, yours forever, uh, from Buckley Pierce Capital and Heath Ledgerwood Moss the second. All complaints, please send it to his place on South Australia Road, South Australia, number 28, HLM Investments. Uh, mate, thank you very much. It's been a great one. I'll Thanks, talk mate. to you later. Have a good weekend, everyone. Bye.